Thank you for joining us for Occupy CCTV. I'm very honored and touched that Michael Mack is back with us. Thank you for coming. Good to be here, Michael. Oh, I'm Thanks glad. for having me. Glad it's good to. <laughs> and <clears throat> we're going to start with a prayer and see where that leads. I have been calling this improvisational prayer, but we will see what we will see. Yes? Okay. We'll hear what we will hear. So we're going to begin on this Easter Sunday and this past this day of Passover. <sighs> Thank you for being here, Michael Mack. Here we are. Hmm. Yes. And God is with us. God is with all of us, I would say. Hmm. Can you feel it? Feel him, her? My heart is beating. That's hmm. a good sign. Yes. Here's a concern I have about praying on TV. Yes. When I think about prayer, I think about, first of all, the praying that I do when I'm by myself. When I, as one of the Gospels says, I forget which one, Jesus saying something about when you, when yeah. you pray, yes. go to your room, close yeah. the door, pray yes. to your Father yes. in secret. I trust those prayers, those prayers that I say. They feel to me a lot truer than prayers in front of a camera. Let me put it that way. Yes, I agree. I'm, not, I'm sure, I, I don't know if I agree, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I think there's a great temptation in front of a camera. Yes. To... Yeah. That's why I close my eyes. <laughs> to lose it. Although I've been very touched by the people, some of the people, sometimes on the Trinity Network when they, mm. when they pray. See, yeah. It's very... I think eventually, which I've been trying to do at CCTV, get more used to being in the presence of a camera so it doesn't... It's, it doesn't stop me from being myself. I'm not quite there yet. I can hear the frog in my throat mm. as I say this. Even with another human being, I find myself that I'm not quite mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. That I've never felt quite myself unless I'm by myself. Or, you know, if I'm talking to God by myself. Yes. That's the closest that I can come, I think, to telling the truth. Because if I'm with another human being, I'm also... I guess I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but I'm, I'm presenting for the other human being. Well, thank you, Michael. <laughs> it's sort of like traveling in the way that if you travel to another country by yourself, you're going to have a very different experience than if you travel to another country with another human being especially if it's someone who is a friend of yours yes. or someone you have some contacts with, some history with. Because you're b going to be experiencing that context or that history more than you are simply being in direct contact, direct relationship with the place that you're visiting. And so it seems similar to me. And prayer is kind of traveling. Don't you think? Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. I've been <clears throat> thinking about relationship. Let's talk about relationships. 
and I was I was dancing at Universal Dances of Universal Peace, which are the first and third Friday of every month and the second Saturday at Quaker House, Five Longfellow Park. In Cambridge. In Cambridge. Outside Harvard Square. Yes. And we hold hands with, in many of these prayers and repeat the same sacred chants again and again while we're moving in simple dance. You've been? I've not been to oh, that. Oh, my. You've, you've told me about it. Yes. And one of these days I want to go. I've often felt if I weren't a Catholic, I would be a Quaker. Oh, well, this is not, this is not a Quaker, though. These are Sufis. Okay, but it's being held in the, in the, Quaker, the Quaker meeting yes, house. Yes, yes. Okay. But the, these are Sufis. Okay. And I, after doing this for about over an hour, holding hands and, and chanting these prayers, it occurs to me that it's a different hand when it's in relationship with other hands. But that your hand is different. My hand is different. It feels like, oh my, this is what a hand, a hand is often, except for us who live more solitary lives. We are in relation to our basic nature is to be in relation with others and with the earth and the sky and so on. And it might be for people like me who have spent a lot of time alone, that I forget that and think my basic nature is solitary me meeting you. Yes. So, therefore, prayer for many people, like in a drum circle, or in the Sufis dancing together, is it also can only happen as a communal act. I'm not saying this to disagree with you, but just adding another way. And it could be that I can only really be who I am when I am in community with others. I remember when I was a teenager, one of the things that I wrestled with was my experience that when I was by myself, I was a different person yes. than when I was with somebody else. Yep. And when it, I was, it seemed that with everybody else that I was with, with each person that I was with, I was somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so it was disturbing to me, it was distressing to me because I didn't feel like I knew who I was. And it was only where I came back to what I thought of as my center when I was by myself, yes. that I felt like I could really connect with who I was, that I felt like I had connection with some, that fundamental identity. But I understand where you're coming from, I think. I can't do it. I'm more like you. I'm just learning. This is advanced stage to be in relation with others. And you have, you've been, um, you've been living with Michelle for what, like a year and a half now? A year and a half now. That is challenging. Hmm. From what you're saying, it, it's easier to be myself or even here with you closing my eyes and feeling my own body. Even here, it's hard. I think if you weren't here, I could talk to the imagined audience, maybe mm. a little e easier, easy. mm. maybe. So not, even that is hard. I have a radio show in this room next door, and it goes out Tuesday at from two to four. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's listening. Even that's a very, it's, Taking, I'm trying to learn how to be, feel like I'm, be, I'm myself while talking to maybe no one. Hmm. I actually do better when friends visit in that lonely studio. Then I discover 
which we might in good conversations, discover things that never could come out come up if we were by ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's only so much that we can get from our yes. inner source, whatever that is. But I do relate with what you're saying about closing one's eyes. When I close my eyes, I feel like I can connect with something truer. But it also, it's not good TV. <laughs> ah, we're doing it all for, we're like, is it McDonald's or Burger, Burger King's? Who does it all for you? Uh, that's Burger King. Burger right? King, we're yeah. doing it for you. <laughs> now you're helping us, maybe, if we could be ourselves. And I think, right, certainly the prayer, even in when I go to Quaker meeting or Buddhist meditation, every night of the week at six o'clock, they close the doors. You have to be there at, um, I think it's 331 Broadway. And to do it in, in a group, which where you can close your eyes, but it's such a different feeling than alone in a room. Oh, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Or even to meditate with Michelle, my sweetheart. What a difference. I know what you're talking about. I mean, I go to Mass at least once a week, and it's just, I can't get that. I can't get my experience at Mass with other people at the Mass, at the Catholic Mass. I can't get that by myself. What I get by myself is something very different, very important, yes, necessary, but it's not enough. It's not the whole thing. It's not... So it's I not guess the package. I guess both are both, both are important. Are very helpful. Both yes. are very helpful. And maybe at different times in our lives we emphasize one rather than the other. Yeah. So with that as a long introduction, do we want to try including eyes open, closed, looking at each other, maybe moving, maybe not, maybe touching, maybe not? See asking for solo time see what emerges from opening ourselves up to perhaps praying with the camera watching with you thank you so much for watching with us we hope you are actually joining us in this prayer if you would like to that was all a question if you would like to do that Mike. Yeah. I forget how the question began. Would, so, you, uh, <laughs> would you like to... Do you want to pray? Is that what you're asking? Yes, in front of other people. Yes. And with options to do it more together or more apart. I'm reluctant. Uh, my reluctance is around, I think, my prayer tends to be slow. I have slow mind when I pray. Mm -hmm. as opposed to fast mind. Mm. So, my concern is, again, not good TV. But we don't have to put this up. And people don't have to watch. They could have already switched the dial. <laughs> it's not, and we love you anyway. We, I'm, even if you're switching right now, I'm so glad you are there to switch. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, if Goodbye. you are. We, this is a story we're telling you might be riveted. <laughs> or maybe not. The lovely thing about CCTV is they let us do this. I love this sign that's behind us. Yes. It looks like believe. It could be that too, yes. Or be live. Or be live. Or be alive. True. Not easy. We could bring extra letters. If Next time in, we could bring extra letters. Just the E to put in. Yes. The A ah or the E. Yeah. The choice. So you're. I, are you answering no? You would like to not. You could. I don't know if I have the guts. Okay. I don't want to push. I. The last thing I want to do is push. Push. What we agreed upon. Yeah. How about this? Yes. Okay. 
How about this is a possible way in? Yes. That we start with a 15 second prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm not committing to anything more than 15 seconds. Okay. But we can start with an honest, authentic, true, the truest, most honest 15 Jeez. second prayer that we can say. We have to say or not say. Or we have to speak it. Oh. We don't have to speak it. Mm. We could be entirely silent. Oh, good. Which is, I think, perhaps the truest prayer that there is: is to be silent, is to listen. There's this wonderful anecdote that I just recently heard about Mother Teresa that I'd like to share with you. Have I shared this with you so far? Yet in our lives, somewhere? Does this, <laughs> are any bells ringing yet? Not yet, no. Okay. No. Stop me if you've heard this before. <laughs> so the story goes that someone was asking Mother Teresa how she prays. And she said, I listen to God. And the questioner was not satisfied with that. And so the questioner asked, but what does God say? And Mother Teresa said, He doesn't say anything. He's listening to me. And if you don't understand that, I can't explain it to you. I love that story. It's a great story. <laughs> it's, a great it's, about, story. it's a great story about the awful silence of God. Well, and when I say awful, I mean awful in all senses. Awe-inspiring. That silence, going into the vast silence of God, the vast silence, the vast emptiness that is a part of our lives and is a part of our existence when we shut up. I love that story now that I'm beginning to understand it. That's, very, that's a communion between them. And that is It's a communion a with silence as... Yes the communion wafer, as silence as the communion medium. And the listening in the silence. Yes. And knowing someone is listening to you. And right. simply hearing what's there. And, it, and what's there is, it, apparently since nothing is said to, by either of them, what's there is the listening in, in silence. Which is very wonderful. So you can tell me when we're starting our 15 seconds. There was something that I heard from my good friend Bert Stern recently, who was repeating something from Meister Eckhart, the great Catholic mystic, medieval mystic, who said something like, the ear with which we hear God is the same ear with which he hears us. I don't know if that's what my friend Bert Stern said or not. And I don't know if he heard correctly what Meister Eckhart said. So you're getting this through several media. So the ear, I'm so proud that I understood Mother Teresa finally, and now this is getting more challenging. Okay. The ear with which I hear God is the ear is the same ear the same ear with which he hears you which which he hears me the ear yes unfortunately my irreverent mind thinks of danny k the vessel with oh. the pestle has the pellet with the poison and the flagon <laughs> with the dragon has the brew that is true you remember that Did you remember no that? Forgive, this is a brief interruption, but may I? I need the context, please. Okay. Run away with it. So, but we're going to go back to Meister Eckhart. We have to of watch course, the time. Of course, of course, of course. So, Danny Kay has to deliver, he's a jester, the court jester, this is the name of the movie, a drink to the king to poison him so that they can escape from the castle with the princess. Okay. And he's told at the last moment when he's ready to do this because they didn't want anyone to find out. The vessel with the pestle mm. has the pellet with the poison. The flagon with the dragon has the brew that is true. So when he offers a drink to the king, he can give him <laughs> the vessel with the pestle and take a, 
and and say yes to your health, your highness, and drink from the flagon that the dragon it was very important. I see, I see a screw up coming yes, up. It, it's very important. So he has to remain shaking, but he's he keep repeating this the best with them because you can forget, you know, like like I would, you know, yeah. and, and under pressure, this is huge pressure, life or death. Yeah. So the vessel, he keeps repeating the vessel with the pestle as the pestle and the poison, the flag with the dragon as he's walking close, close to the king. And f and just when he's about to get to the king, another messenger comes to him. Wait a minute. <laughs> the ch he substitutes the chalice with the pestle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the pellet. <laughs> okay. With that as a irreverent aside, <laughs> the ear... With which the ear with the tear, the ear with which I hear God. Now the ear with the tear is the ear that God hears me. Is that it? I have it right. Yes, don't I? The ear with which you hear God. Yes, is the ear with which He hears you. Okay, so let's just do this now. I do it. Um, your ear or mine? What? Oh, let's ear to ear. Out. No, no, I just want to figure this out. This ear, listening to God. Is, You're taking it far more literally. No, than, I, I don't have. I, oh, I don't. I'm trying to understand it. Okay, I got the other one. I was so proud with the yeah. communion and silence. Yeah. The ear with which I hear God, so I can listen. Here's what. I, here's my takeaway. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. I'm saving you. Yes. Um. That God. And I, God and you, mm -hmm. are so intimately connected. Oh, this is beautiful that the organ with which you hear God, with which you communicate with God, is the same organ with which he communicates with you. My. You are that close. Because we're, we're in communion. We're in communion. Yes. Beautiful. Whew. Saved. And still have eight minutes to go. No, less. The, less? The 727. Okay. And then right. there's... The, we, we might stay on... We're going to, one of us at least will be here for another half an hour. Lloyd Smith has kindly donated his time to us. He'll be back, however, on CCTV radio tomorrow afternoon, Monday, between 2 to 4. And, and most, most probably be back next Sunday. Now, I want to let you guys know that you think that we're looking at you. But we're looking at ourselves. We no, are looking not, at no, the monitor. Now listen, listen. <clears throat> Speak for yourself, Michael Mack. We are looking at a monitor. So I'm looking at Michael Coran and I'm looking at myself with a slight like half second delay. We are looking at a monitor of ourselves. I'm more The monitor, at listen. <clears throat> the monitor with which we see ourselves is the same monitor with which God sees us. Oh, this is getting, I was so happy we're getting those first two. The monitor? We're not going to get So to, look in the monitor. Are we going to get to the prayer? Look in the monitor. No, I'm looking in the monitor. What do you now. see in the monitor? I see you and me. And be live. But we also are being seen by God. We're being seen by the monitor. We're being seen by the audience out there. Yes. But we. if I look in the camera... I was looking down, unfortunately, but if I look in the camera, then I'm communing with the audience. If I'm looking at this, they'll see me with my eyes looking upward. Well, the camera is one inch below yes. the monitor. Yes. So, it, it would roughly, matter. we are looking yes. both at the camera and the, the monitor yes. at the same time. I, I actually am schooled to not see me pretty much now. Oh, really? Yes. I, because I, you've been doing this so long because I, you're a professional. Be. You're an expert. That's, you, yes, that's, that's, that's what I am. A professional expert. A professional expert. <laughs> Guess you missed it. We have Michael Mack. It's not the Senate. This is, this is the baptism on Easter Sunday. Wow. I wonder if that feels nice. And we really are just getting started. Yes, so maybe you'll stay. There's another half an hour. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, that's good. I think you're getting into this. But we'll, we should end this with a little 15-second prayer we've offered. We've people. been promising a prayer yeah. all this time. <laughs> They're very angry. I don't think they can throw They've me. been waiting. They've yes, been waiting. waiting. Let's get a 15. 15. We're not asking for much. Okay, shall we? <laughs> do we have to, like, totally <laughs> shift gears in order to do this? No, I'm just going to... 
I'm going to, as my dance, wonderful dance teacher, movement teacher, Patrick Rowley said, I'm going to assume that these next 15 seconds are our prayer. And whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. <sighs> Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Michael Mack, for being with me. Thank Here you. we are. Thank you, God. Here we are. Thank you, God, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, life, for giving us this moment. The yeah. only one we have. Well, are we allowed to kiss God? The lips <laughs> with which you kiss God. Are God's lips? Yes. Yeah. Jesus kisses us, yes. Or I like to call him Jeshua, his, his Hebrew name. He was mm -hmm. never called Jesus. He was never called Jesus? Never in his whole life, not once. When did he become, oh, when, they when wrote, was he called Jesus? When they wrote it in the, the Gospels in, in popular Greek, mm -hmm. then they changed the Jewish names. Now it started in Aramaic, right? Yeah, Jesus spoke in Aramaic. Okay. And they changed, when they wrote it in Greek, because they were having, as we were talking, battles with the, with the, the Christians were a Jewish sect and as Jews always do, there's wrestling matches going mm -hmm. on. The word Israel means to wrestle with God and sometimes win. And you've taught me the Jewish way recently. Yes. The Jewish way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Forgive me, I hope I'm not offending anyone. Yes. Mostly you. Oh, okay. Um, but the Jewish way, as I understand it from you, Yes. jump in any time. Oh, interrupting, well, yes. Interrupting. Interrupt yeah. any time. Yes, that, that is very, very... I've been taught, I was taught, I was raised, no, 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 yeah. listen until the speaker, i.e. my dad, is done. <laughs> <laughs> listen till my dad is done. Now in these next three minutes, we are on tape, but probably not on TV. If that changes your attitude toward these next three minutes. When is the end? With this show is now ended for the television audience, most probably for the next two and a half minutes. So we're, it's dead air right now? It's, they're probably advertising. This I is wish somebody had told me. I had told you this, actually. We're, we're getting thumbs up, which means... We're on, oh, we're, we're still on. on. Oh, thank you. We're still on. And thank you for listening to us. <laughs> we have an audience. Somebody's out there. Somebody's out there. <laughs> okay, so we're still on. I was wrong again. <laughs> now we have a half an hour to fill. Yes. It's no, like we, looking at a blank piece now, of paper. We didn't officially end this 15 second prayer. I, so it's officially still going on. Yes. I it's a this prayer does, of delight. It's a prayer of... It, does, it feels different. Somehow prayer feels different to me than what we've been doing, which has been having fun. We've been having fun. <laughs> yes. Whereas when I started, I guess you can have fun praying. Well, there's that... There's an image, a popular image of Jesus, um, which I've seen simply titled Jesus Laughing, which yes. is so, it's rare to see. I think that I have never seen that in uh, the church that I was raised in and still practice in the Catholic Church. I don't think that I've ever seen a, an image of Jesus laughing and having a good time, but I might be wrong about that. But I love the idea. He was, after all, as the, he was a man. He was a man divine. And I would say a man divine in the way that all of us are men divine. That we all have that ear of God and lips of God and connection with God and mm -hmm. the potential for being pure, clear voices of God. And maybe we are already. We all are in our way, I think. All, all of us, even I. But this raises the Hitler question. Yes. What about Hitler? Where does Hitler factor into that equation? It's hard speaking about people I don't know, actually, to tell you the truth. Okay. I much prefer to speak about the nun who bent your, if you mind, if you would like to. But I mean, or people who've been mean to me. Not a nun. Jeez. Not a nun. Oh, my, Not uh, a nun. But, um... I mean, so many, I, 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 I think I'm going to pass on speaking about, I think, although I do, I could get personal, because I have two friends who escaped from Germany. 
and managed to make three beautiful daughters. And so I'm very grateful to them, but Hitler would have killed them. And that, so that you ask the question if someone would have killed Jack and Eva Apfelbaum, and then their daughters, the wonderful daughter, Maya Apfelbaum, who was a sweetheart of mine for a while and just really helped me be live. Hmm. Taught me to dance, among other things. And once hugging her, I felt like I was transparent. That you could see right through me. So did she? Did you feel that she could she, see right through you? I felt that I was just mostly made of space, just because mm. of who she was in mm. hugging me. I once felt when she was massaging me on a, thank you, Maya, on a tree branch, that that I. I that the branch was, it's hard to say these things in words. I think I'm just, I was just transparent so the branch could be in me. I think that would be the closest thing that I could say. And the branch is one of these branches that are horizontal, just a rare branch that's just parallel to the ground. So to think that she wouldn't be and that Hitler would have killed Jack and Eva, and so your question is, is he divine? Is that the question? I'm not sure that that's quite the question. The question is about the question of evil. Yes. Which is something that we've wrestled with since the beginning of civilization, I guess. How do we... We have this idea of God, and we have this idea of well, maybe I shouldn't even say we, because there are so many ways that, so many, so many groups have, so many peoples have sought to come to an understanding of this mysterious, mysterious life that we all live, that we all share, with its beauties and its horrors. I would venture to say mostly beauties, but sometimes you can't escape the horrors. How do we make sense of it all? Where is, where is God in all of this? Well, I have so many questions you're asking. I'm going to, the last one's a little easier. I like to think of God, this is more my answer, not mm -hmm. necessarily that it would be yours, using the word divining. You know, like you, you, we had someone on the show recently who brought divining rods. Mm -hmm. And the binding rods, you hold them, and they help you find oil or water. And it works, apparently. Hmm. And she Did said, you try it? Yeah, it didn't work for M Michelle or I, but it okay. works for many people. The yeah. suit says big society and so on. And she said you don't even need the rods. You can just feel it in your body if you wanted to. So I like to think of, instead of the word God, that we're, we're divining rods. And we're looking for, instead of oil and water, we're looking for that amazing divine energy. And when we can find it and help bring it out, then we have people like Martin Luther King who, you know, changed the world, or Gandhi, or Thoreau, or even when we do it in our small ways. Like you might have had, I don't, you might not use the word, a divining rod to, to create your two beautiful plays. Can we tell people if they want to find information about those plays, where to go? Sure. I can't, I can't say no to right, right. Why promotion. You, yes. Well, Thank you. So my guest, we don't think I've, the only thing I've even identified him is Michael Mack. And he's created two plays that people love. And you could find out more about them at... Michael Mack Live. Oh, just like us? Dot com, yes. <laughs> no! Oh, synchronicity. So... So for me, the word God is better defined as looking for divinity and finding it and that amazing, live, divine energy, spirit that when we can find it can help guide us and nurture us. I'm thinking about the car talk guys. Yep. 
We could try to be the God Talk guys. Okay. It's, it's, we sca- might need more hilarity. Sca- scares me a little bit. <laughs> the, what scares you about it? Um, it scares me to th- just now you've told me I am a what was I a professional expert? Professional expert. But that yes. was on being on television yeah. to be a be a to talk about God. I wouldn't want to use the word professional or expert. Hmm. I'm more like you. You're very humble about these things. I'm very, very <laughs> humble. You are. I'm the most <laughs> humble guy <laughs> I know. Making fun of his humility, but he is really being <laughs> humble about this. Because so um, you want to see how humble I can get? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, I'm getting... Let me shove you out of the way and I'll tell you how humble I can You can. can. Get. We, I can go. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was just answering the second part that when where is God when evil is happening, we need to use our ability to find divine energy to stop things. Well, there's this idea... Like Martin Luther King used the church and the energies from the churches to help the civil rights movement succeed. He was divine. Discernment. He was, you could call it, you have different Discernment. Names. Yes. So instead of the question, where is God? The question, if God is everywhere, all we do is need people like you and I, just like um, to, to make the United States better. All we need to do is have enough people, form enough movement to make this a more democratic country. Well, as we use our faculties to try and discern between mm-hmm. good and evil. Yes. It occurs to me that you very recently had here as a guest, Vicki Poppy, yep. who is a teacher of the Course in Miracles. And the Course in Miracles is a, um, uh, many say, is a divinely inspired text, mm-hmm. uh, a channeled text um, uh, in the voice of Jesus, uh, a, a remarkable book. Um, and one that I have found much, much beauty in. But The Course in Miracles draws a line between two states of being. That only two states of being exist in this world in which we live. There's love and there's fear. And everything that we do, everything that we think, is a result of one of those Mm. two states of being. So we are either acting or thinking or responding in a loving way, or we are acting, thinking, or responding in a fearful way. If we re- um, so if we're going to use those as our divining rods, mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to, get, to consider just about any circumstance, I imagine, say, well, love or fear, love or fear. Hitler, well, not love, mm-hmm. must be fear. Okay. Um, you can end the program now if you want. Oh, I see. Well, or we're, we're we're getting close. Actually. Okay. Not quite. We still have another. I love having an hour because it's more leisurely. Hmm. So that that sounds like a good a, an answer that would be helpful mm-hmm. to open our hearts and be loving rather than being fearful. And, or that would that sounds like a very good thing if we if we can do it. Well, the Jesus who is presented us, presented to us in the Gospels, um, was, I think it's fair to say, safe to say, first and foremost, loving. His teaching embodied love. And when asked once what the essence of his teaching was, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and strength, and to love thy neighbor. Yes. As thyself. Hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. Amen, brother. That would all be right. very, very nice. I mean, he sometimes, being human, the ending, which is very related to today. Today being Easter. Easter, 2012. So I was thinking about this. Going into Jerusalem, I lived in Israel for three years, hmm. and we would have a Palm Sunday when we'd have a donkey and there'd be a big parade with many Arab Christians 
as well as um, Christians from all over the world joining in the parade with with palms. Here comes the and the, and the words on the parade were King of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's not political action, I don't know what is. That's nonviolent action. That's extraordinarily threatening to any state. Here comes the king when huh. there was a king of the yeah. Jews. Yeah. There's a new king because yeah. Jesus, Jeshua, is bringing a new kingdom of, of divining or loving between people. But it was a hugely provocative, dangerous thing to do. Hmm. And then when you add to this him going into the temple, that's like going into St. Paul's in Cambridge, but this is the... You know, in Washington D.C., the Jerusalem's the capital of the country. When the Romans are in control and taking a, making a whip and beating people who were who, who were doing the their job, you know, changing. Okay, question: Was he beating people? I think he, it says in the Gospels that he, he did. had some kind of yes lash, I, but I, I think he could have just been like sweeping the tables. He might have been even that though. I, I think it says he whipped people, but I, that would be a good question. We'd have to check. Mm. Go to the but source. either it doesn't matter. Yes, it, doing that is such a that's an act of violence, really, to to provocative uh, certainly, uh, violent to, and, to property certainly. Yes, and it seems to me that you can't look at the life of Jesus and not see a left wing radical. He was anti establishment. Yes, he was bringing something brand new. Yes, and and he knew he would die for it. As it says, as, in, as it says in the gospel, he knew he would die for it. And in some ways, he was, he was, um, choreographing that death, saying, "Okay, I'm going to tell you when you're going to kill me, and when you're going to crucify me." I was in mass a couple of days ago on Good Friday, and hearing the recounting through one of the gospels, and I can't remember which one it was, but I made a connection. For the first time in my mind, because I think that Isaiah, uh, there were readings from Isaiah that happened early in the Mass, and there were uh, readings from the, from the Gospel, one of the Gospels, and the idea that he was fulfilling what was just presented to us in Isaiah. The thought occurred to me. Now, here was a guy who was very intimately familiar with the Hebrew texts, that he was raised in the Hebrew scriptures, that he was an expert, and as the Gospels say, that he could, he could teach in the temple, and people were amazed. When he was 12. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was amazing people from an early age. Yes. Yeah. So, so he was certainly familiar with the, with the old text, with Isaiah and the other prophets. I'm trying to think about how to say this next thing. Yes, we are. Because at an earlier age, in an earlier century, I might be killed for this. That's a good, then, that's a good introduction. To, that's, that's a good ending. The audience, that's a good ending. The audience is fascinated. <laughs> They've got the, yes, I can feel them. We're the, just about out of time Now we have another here. 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is going to take us in a very different direction. There was somebody in the last century, at the beginning of the 20th century, a, um, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a student of psychology, who proposed the idea that Jesus had a mental illness, that Jesus had schizophrenia. And it's certainly a common event that when somebody has schizophrenia, an illness that I'm familiar with because my mom had it. And my mom, when she first had her psychotic break... When thought, you were six, right? When I was five. Five. When I was five. She thought that she was the Blessed Mother. Oh, she did. And she, she thought, was. She made you. Well, she made me earlier. But yeah. she had just given birth to my baby sister. Why? And wow. she was convinced at one point that she was the Blessed Mother. Yes. Could it be that this writer from the last century mm -hmm. proposed? Could it be that Jesus, who was so intimately familiar with the text, began to see himself 
as yes, that one for sure, who was going to fulfill yes, the testament. Oh, I'm sure he. I mean, he 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 actually when he went to preach in Galilee, in the synagogue, he gave people the impression he was when he was reading from Isaiah hmm. that I am the one who is Isaiah is talking about, hmm. and they didn't like it. So yeah, they didn't yeah. Like it. Yeah. Well, if he had been in our day, he might be living outside on the street. He might be. He did in, live on the streets. That's true. He did. He absolutely he did, did live on the streets. He just was, like your mother did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was ho he was homeless. He was homeless. In fact, I think he says something about exactly that. that yes. Foxes birds, have bed in. Yes. But there's no place. I don't have a bed. Yeah. Box. What a brave man. I mean, he did manage to... Th I mean, he ran an organization. It, was a big, it wasn't just himself and, the tw and his 12 students. There were 72 by then. 72? Yes, I think there, were, there was... Okay, 72. I've never heard this number before oh, in my yes. life. What are you talking about? He, had, he told other people... They, he, they were... They were um, he had the, the, his core circle of 12... Yeah. And then there was um, six other groups of 12 that went all over Israel. And he gave them instructions if they, I'm pretty certain of Where this. did you get this information? This is, I've read, I, I mean, I'm not I have claiming. never heard this before in I'm my life. I'm willing to bet, but I I'm not going to I was raised claim. in the Catholic yes. faith. Okay, I'm willing to bet, but I could be wrong. So the only kind of bets I'm interested in. But I think there were many others that were sent out to the, to other towns, and he said that if they don't don't take a uh, knapsack or any food, and if they don't take good care of you in this little village you're visiting, just wipe the dust off your feet and go to another one. Mm -hmm. And they were also learned learned about healing. Well, that makes sense to me. The idea I've just never heard the number seventy-two before, I, but it yeah. makes sense that he would have this inner circle of yeah. twelve. Yeah. I mean, if you consider any great teacher, yes. any great time. It's I mean, we we could look at uh, you know in our own time. Pope counseling anything. Yeah. That there Su will there will be the people Sufi order, yes. who who receive like the direct teaching, if yes, you will. Yes. And then there are. And I'm actually, this may not be a very good example at all, um, but it comes to mind, so I'll just say what comes to mind. But I think of uh, Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Yes. Who, uh, for as long, I, I guess since, the, since 1975, when I first became familiar with him, um, he's been writing books of a spiritual nature, spiritual and psychological nature, an inquiry into what it means to be a human being, a spiritual being, a psychological being. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that he has got people that he's very close to, Yes, that he shares special insights with. And then there are those folks like myself who read his books or have read his books or see him on public television um, who get a different... Oh, and then there's the in-between, people who have studied with him that aren't the inner circle and then go yeah. out and teach, yep. Yep. teach from the th things they've studied with him. So it makes sense. So I'm only taking issue yes. with the 72. Yes, I could do I need to know where that yes. number came from. <clears throat> it is 6 times 12, but whatever. 6 times 12. And what's the significance of 6? We know the significance of 12. Yes. But what's the significance of 6? I don't know the I could make it up, but you I You know, won't. every number <laughs> yes. has the significance in... But a leader of this organization, more than 12, to then... Willingly, I've never yeah. heard. I'm using the Jewish way. Yeah, I have never heard him spoken of in that way. I've never heard Jesus as being the leader of an organization. Yes. Okay, that's that's an amazing thing yeah. for me to hear. I and I can't really argue with it. I'm just sad, not sad. I, it was, but Martin Luther King did the same. In some he way. couldn't do it all by himself. He needed an right. organization. And he he needed willing, people he with him. He was willing to put his life on the line by going to Memphis and get, starting getting to get economic now, supporting the 
garbage workers who were on strike. So it wasn't just civil rights. It was now more workers' rights. And, and he was anti-war. Against the war. Yeah. So he was really asking. He knew. And he knew it when he gave that talk. Um, I might not see the promised land. Hmm. Identifying himself hmm. with Moses. So Joshua knew. Now we don't know, though. I have to. I have to say this. We don't know that he knew. We're inferring that he knew from what yeah, he, he said. Yes, we but don't, was I agree. not. Did not Moses himself say? I mean, was not he drawing like Jesus did, drawing on an early text, being intimately familiar with the early text, drawing on an early text to advance this new work? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait. So though Moses, well, I, I, that's going to bring us astray. Okay. So I'm just moved, I guess, to tears that this leader of of the this Jewish um, sect, I guess, this this the because Jesus lived and died a Jew. He said, "You have to follow the Torah. Every little tittle and jot. I'm a Jew, and my followers are to be Jewish." And that he would willingly sacrifice he was circumcised. himself. circumcised. Yes. Willingly sacrifice himself to be crucified. And my own, I'm just going to slip this in. I like to think of him, since he was only on the cross for three hours and was taken down. And Pil even Pilate was amazed, said, is he dead already? I like to think of him as maybe even clinically flatlined. But since it was only three hours, and often people died on the cross from asphyxiation, which took quite a longer time, mm. that his friends who loved him took him off and took him into this very nice tomb and, revi and he revived, even if he was flatlined, uh, and maybe even helped choreograph this. There was a famous book called the... Um, I forget the name of it at the moment famous book about this. And so that he choreographed the fact that he could take the toughest punch from Rome, crucifixion, and still, with the love of his friends, be revived and then come around and be even more, after facing this, more human. And instead of saying, verily, verily, he said, what do you have for dinner, Michael? Is it fish? I love, I love some fish. And they recognized him. Oh my, you're the teacher. So this would mean that for all of us, even when feeling like we're going to die or feeling that we're brave enough to risk death in the Occupy movements, for example, or Martin Luther King in some way, I mean, Martin Luther King did survive the way Jeshua survived, but of course he lives um, deeply in, in the world. Is that a period? Yeah. Is that a period at the end of your yes. sentence? Yes, yes. Because there is something that I need to say. Yes, and you have the four minutes to say it. There's something that what you said inspired me. Something in what you said inspired me to say something. Yep. And I really want to say that thing. Yep. I want to say it with all of my heart because I feel it with all of my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm, my, my body is about to explode with it. I just don't remember what it was. Oh, but it was beautiful and it was good and, you and it was so inspired. I could have interrupted you, you, you interrupt but you were on a roll. Oh, oh. You were doing great. Oh, maybe it'll come. I think it might come. Oh, three minutes, should we be quiet? Let's, let's, pr let's pray. Yes. Let's pray that it come. Let's pray that we, we speak a truth. If we can possibly speak a truth. Let's pray that we can speak a truth, a good truth, a truth that will bring good into the world. What might that be? We have only three minutes remaining. What might it be? Because whatever we walk out of here with is what we get to live with and what our people get to live with. Come on, man. A me? I just remember what you didn't. <laughs> Help me. Help me here. Love you, Michael Mack. What? What's that? Okay, we've got, what, two minutes? Okay. We have one minute. 
<laughs> oh, no, we have two minutes. We have two minutes. Okay. Well, if we were going to say goodbye forever, right now, if when the camera stopped rolling, we were going to die, what would we say? Well, I had a diagnosis of prostate cancer a few years ago, so I lived that. But you've been eating granola since then. Yes. That he prepares by, <laughs> you should see this granola. I say granola in quotation marks. He takes oatmeal, and he throws in some nuts, and some dried fruit, and, this, and fries it. This is the great insight. <laughs> this is the insight you were waiting for. So-called granola. This is the divine, <laughs> my riff about the revival of Joshua. Is there a hope for us? Mm. I think that there is hope for us. There is hope. There is always hope. And it is spring. Mm. Always. It is always spring. My. And that is the beauty to me of the death and resurrection of Jesus is that all day, every day, we have an opportunity to die to an old self and to be born again mm. into a new self mm. by letting go of some old construct, Ooh. some old idea, Ooh. some old belief, some old something that is no longer serving us, but which we're clinging to because as human beings, we want, we're clinging. We want to hold. We want to hold fast to the truth. But if we let go of what we're holding fast to, then a new truth will be revealed to us. Amen, brother. Amen.